Jacob. Hello. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2012. We are in uh, Kona, Hawaii. I am Sean Patrick Doyle, and this is my granddad, uh, George Faden. And I'm going to be asking him about his experience working on the Apollo missions. So you want to hear about Apollo, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, it turns out I was work. I was just finishing up a project that I was working on at a different company when North American uh, Aviation uh, was given the contract by NASA to do the Apollo program, and uh, so uh, I started working for North American. Uh, shortly after they were awarded the contract. And uh, NASA had already worked out the basics for how the Apollo vehicle was going to be configured and operate and perform, but uh, they had not gone far enough to where they had established that what the detailed design would be and how well it would perform and how many mid-course corrections you would have to make when you're on, on your way from the Earth orbit to the moon, and a lot of things like that needed to be engineered and worked out in detail so that uh, it was possible to know that the Apollo vehicle would do its job in a safe and effective way. So uh, one of the things we started doing at the very beginning was doing a reliability analysis because nobody knew what the likelihood was that it would succeed. And so uh, we did a, a, a reliability analysis by analyzing each model module in the design of the vehicle and then combining the reliability of those modules on up to the point where we could actually know what the reliability of the overall uh, vehicle was. And uh, so we spent a lot of time doing that with a lot of people working on it because it's a very complicated uh, mathematical process to do that kind of reliability analysis. And uh, we, we needed to do it early in the program so that as we developed the details of the design, we could uh, take care of any par parts of the design that tended to reduce the overall reliability of the system and improve those and then uh, do, it, do the analysis again to make sure that uh, uh, we've, we've improved them enough to, to get the overall reliability for the entire vehicle that we needed. So which Apollo mission did you do this for? We did it for all of them. Well, see, we were designing, this was a design effort, it was not, we, we did not do the launches and that kind of thing, that was done in Florida. And it was a different facility and different people that did that. We were just the design engineers. And uh, so we, after, after we did the reliability analysis and we were convinced that everything would work well, uh, we continued to, to, to uh, finalize the detailed design and make improvements in the detailed design. And uh, then we started doing an analysis where we determined uh, how well the, uh, the, the, the vehicle would perform uh, celestially. And uh, in other words, on the way to the moon and at the moon. And, uh, when NASA gave the contract to North America, and the original contract, they gave North America the contract for the des development of the entire vi vehicle and the analysis of all the performance except for one thing, and that was for the guidance system. And they decided that since nobody had ever de designed a guidance system to take you to the moon, uh, that they needed to have somebody that was particularly uh, able to come up with a, a suitable design, and they gave the, the contract for the guidance system to Massachusetts Technical uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, uh, Maryland. 
and uh, so we worked very closely with them to make sure that as they developed their design that it, that it was going to uh, perform properly. And the way we did that was we did a, a whole lot of trajectory, a whole group of us did nothing but trajectory analysis where we analyzed the accuracy with which we could uh, fly the vehicle up into Earth orbit, inject it into orbit, Earth orbit, and then and, uh, <coughs> boost it out of Earth orbit on the trajectory to the moon, and then boost it into the lunar orbit and do the landing on the moon from the lunar orbit. And so each, each one of these phases of the mission had to have an individual analysis of the performance of what the performance would be on a normal mission, what the performance would be on an aborted mission, and the performance for any situation that we would encounter. So we did a lot of trajectory analysis uh, to do that. And at the same time we were doing it in Downey uh, at North American, uh, NASA was doing it uh, in, uh, at the NASA headquarters. And uh, then we would get together with them and compare the results of our analysis with theirs and make sure we were all getting the same answers and, and, and demonstrating the same good performance. So did your company like come up with the idea for like the breakaway rocket and then the part that would uh, break away and then they would land on the moon and then it would come back up and like come back down to Earth? That, NASA had developed that basic concept for the whole mission um, before they awarded the contract because they wanted to know that they had something that, that, that appeared to be feasible. and. Uh, uh, so, what, what, what our mission was, was to just complete the design, do all the details of it so that you knew exactly how everything was going to work and how well it was going to perform. Once you finished designing it, did you actually help build it? Uh, we built it. That was part of what we did. <laughs> After we completed the design, we, we built the whole thing and provided the rockets and the, and the, and the rocket engines and everything. There were, there were, there were a number of rockets on the vehicle. There was a, a main propulsion rocket uh, on the command module, as 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 well as the booster rocket that lift the, lifted the whole thing up, and then the boosters would drop off. But once we got into Earth orbit, we we just had the 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 booster rocket on the command module and the small rockets for rotating it and turning. And uh, on, on the mission between the Earth orbit and the lunar orbit, uh, the, the guidance system that, that uh, MIT came up with uh, worked by taking celestial sightings on the stars and the moon and feeding that information into a computer, a small computer that they built. And that computer figured out what direction you had to point the main rocket on the command module during the trajectory to correct any errors in the trajectory and then fire and figure out how long to fire the rocket and this little simple computer <laughs> in those days there was no such thing as a complicated computer they're all very simple and and they came up with a design that actually did all that and it performed and did did it well so how did the Apollo missions work out? Do you think that you did a good job in building it? Oh, absolutely. It was uh, one of the, well, for the complexity of it, there was nothing else ever done that was that complex, complex or new and uh, d doing something that was untried before. And uh, it all worked out almost perfectly. We had some accidents, but uh, most of the missions performed very, very well. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, uh, it, it was, uh, let's see, what else did we do? We, well, there was one thing that happened. Well, after we finished the whole design and it was just left up to uh, Cape Canaveral to do the launches, um, NASA decided that 
after they finish the Apollo program, they would like to uh, build a, a colony on the moon, and they they had to start working on a project to convert the Apollo into a vehicle that would carry all the materials and supplies that they needed to build a, a, a station on the moon. And so we spent quite a bit of time working on that, but they finally got to the point where uh, they didn't they didn't feel they had the necessary funding to go ahead with it, so uh, we stopped doing that. And at that time, the uh, <coughs> they started they started working on on well it was shortly after that when they started working on the space station that we have today. Did you hope to work on the space station too? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I stayed there for a little while and did that, and then I moved on to some other projects. Awesome. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. Well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me.